D'Addario's newly redesigned NS Micro headstock tuner is even better than before. It has a wider opening ratchet grip, 360 degrees of adjustment, and a simplified button layout, designed in partnership with Ned Steinberger. What is up, true believers? This is Perry Bean with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Exit Inn, hanging out with Pete! Up, this man? rules, How's dude, I'm so excited. This is great, man. Um, uh, Bouncing Souls are a seminal punk rock band, but beyond that, you're a big deal producer. You've produced some of my favorite bands, the loved ones, Dave House, The Messengers, oh, nice. like, man, you're really killing it. And nice, I know man. that you have, you know, a studio full of cool gear. We're gonna focus on what you got going on today, because okay. this stuff looks like it's been on the road with you for a while. Couple of them have, yeah. Yeah. All right. This is great. Let's start with this. Uh, this is your number one, right? Yeah. It's a '79 Les Paul Custom. Had I've had it for about 20 years, but um, I bought it, um, and it in like 1999, and it had been under someone's bed for 20 years, <laughs> so it was brand new. So. What'd you get for it? Do I think I, I. Back then, I think it was it was right. It was like it was like 1,200 bucks maybe. Oh. You know, like, how how like, have you ever like had a headstock break? Or no, like no. That? Wow. Cool. I just got it um, refreshed for the first time at Russo's, where I live in uh, Asbury Park, and they did an awesome job. It took me years to do it because I didn't want to. Like the frets were like, they were down there. Huh? Just fretless guitar, almost. <laughs> <laughs> but it um, still works. Yeah. Are, what, uh, are those the original pickups that came in it, or did you swap um, them out? I've had the, the bridge one um, rewired by the same guy who did the um, fret job. Yeah. Cool. Right on. Called Luther Lee. Yeah, and I've, I guess. You have kind of a matching 79 as well. Too. I do, That's yeah. Number two. yeah. I'm, I've most seen you with this, but. Yeah, this thing's seen a lot of shit. You know? yeah, yeah, no doubt. A lot of sweat. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot of, sweat. of blood, <laughs> I'm sure. Some blood. Man, that thing is great. And I've a seen you play tears. all manner of amps. I know that you had a Soma Tone yep, yep. and some, some other stuff. Time. But for this, you're just going with the Jubilee and the 800, which this yep. is the reissue, right? Yes, yeah, the new Jubilee and 800 too, just because. Uh, tried and true, man. You yeah, can't beat it. Just, it does what it does. One new amps that like wouldn't break and stuff and right. on the road. So I'm guessing you've had this cab since like you were born? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um, are, are the this cab has been in the, since like, like the early 90s, so it's That's been insane. everywhere. Crazy. Have you had to replace the speakers? Ever? No. Wow. No. I can't believe they haven't been poked through considering nope. the condition of the cab. It's, 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 uh, it's some kind of a abnormality. It just, it just works. Things are tanks, man. So I'm guessing it probably, what, it have vintage 30s in it or something? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Cool, man. And then also you're running a Vox. Yeah. Which your Summit was kind of doing that Vox circuit. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, so like the combination of all three of them sounds pretty cool. Are you, yeah, like, you know? using a switcher to turn them on and off or are you going? I, I do. I, I use a, um, a Bradshaw. This ancient Bradshaw. Ancient right Bradshaw unit. It's not as old as it looks. It's just. Uh, Golly. It's just like, been stomped on a lot. Yeah. The mid 2000s. Have um, you had to have it, like the switches repaired or anything? Just going back to him a couple of times. Yeah. And every time he's like, he's like, holy shit. Like, he's, what's it say? I think he said that it looked like it came from like a uh, shipwreck. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it looks like it's lived yeah. underwater for yeah. half of its <laughs> life, dude. That's cool. But it All still right. works. So when you're building your tone, are you going like, Here's a light gain sound, here's a medium gain sound, here's a lead sound. I kind of have the whole thing just dialed to play all at once. But, okay. But I, I have um, a boost pedal if you want like any, for, any kind for of leads boost. and stuff yeah. like that. Spe Mostly it's just the whole thing just kind of. Speaking all of once. leads, uh, dude, the new EP, that song 1989. Oh. That lead rips, man. Thanks, man. I, cool, thank you. Unfortunately, <laughs> we can't hear the amps right now because we're just before sound check. I would love to let you guys hear these. Um, but you know what an 800 sounds like. It does yeah. a rock and roll thing, yeah. But um, yeah, that's a killer lead. And yeah. I, like, I'm Thank listening you. to that like, dang, I wonder what's all go is going on there. You're not like a, the most pedal-centric player, no. but you do have some stuff. You got like a Dimension C still, yeah. right? I just, uh, I just see for like a little bit of chorus and um, um, the Memory Man for a uh, delay. little delay. Yeah. With your chorus settings, are you, is it extreme or is it like really, really light like a? The pedal has, it, it's just four buttons. Yeah. It's like one, two, three, four. It's, I think it's like a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, okay. I think I'm, there's three, so <laughs> right, that it's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> what kind of, like, what songs are you using um, chorusing on? It's just like a couple solo parts. Gotcha. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. to thicken it up a little yeah. bit, almost like a slight double tracking yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, man, that's great. That's super great. And so, what else uh, do you got going on effects wise? Um, that's it. I mean, 
it's mostly just everything on, you know, one guitar band, it's hard to fill the whole space up. So. Right, right. Yeah, more I guess amps, like, more do you, choose from. doing this band for so long, you guys have been a band since what, like 88? 89, yeah. 89, holy crap, that is so long. 30 year anniversary. So when you're writing for, for the Bouncing Souls, is that something that you keep in mind, like not to, you know, maybe overproduce on the record because you can, are you trying to make a record that you can pull off live? Yeah, like a, I try to write like a, the guitar parts that, even if, if there's, there's two parts, it's like, if there's some way to kind of like play them both yeah, that together, kind of you know, with the, like a bar chord with an octave kind of yeah, thing yeah, to fill sure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and so I know you got a couple of guitars with just these two Les Pauls, but um, right are now, they yeah. same tuning, same string setup, yeah. and everything? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're pretty much run in the middle, down the middle, it's normal e tuning. Standard. Yeah, yeah. E standard. Nothing weird. Keep it simple, Steven. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. That's yeah. a good yeah. approach. Yeah. yeah. We just well, never like, like when we first started writing songs, like like we didn't know there was anything else. Like 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 we just knew. Like Ramon songs and stuff. Right, right. Like, we didn't know, like there's a tune down to D or a tune down to. What uh, what gauges are you running? They're um, Ernie Ball, uh, 11s. Cool, Just cool. Like, I love that you're back. a cable guy. Yep. Just plug right in. And plug right do in. Do it. No wireless or none yeah. of that. Less things to go wrong. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that's why I have this. Because I'm 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 fucking klutz. So if I, if I have like a bunch of pedals on stage. It, it's a nightmare. It would yeah. never work. You know? Plus, half the time you can't see yourself what you're doing anyway. Yeah. I, that's, that's my big scare yeah. with having more than, you know, exactly, yeah. a handful I, of pedals. I would fall over them, they come unplugged. But everyone, like, you know, makes fun of you the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously this is your setup, you know, for live, <laughs> and you've had this gear for quite a while. But like, uh, just while I got you, like, what are, what are some of your fa favorite amps to record with? Because I know that, well, let me backtrack, okay. two studios, why? They're both in Asbury Park, well, right? Well, I have my own studio that's like, I just kind of just kind of built it, but then I work in other studios. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. do you like track in one and do drums in another? Or I can do anything kind of like back and forth. Just, yeah, depends yeah. on budget and stuff like that. What's your like, um, you know, obviously you've recorded a lot of punk rock, a lot of my favorite punk rock, man. I love Thanks. the loved ones. Like when they came in to record, what amps did you grab? Did you go for an 800? I don't remember like no, so long ago. But, <laughs> okay. but, but I, I like to use um, um, no JMP at home that Oh, okay. I love to yeah. use and um, uh, uh, Soma Tone. Oh yeah, that's it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a Roaring Forty that is awesome for like any recording. That's at like all. a ELA the eighty four bass amp. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. We did a rig rundown with Jason Isabel, and he has one of those things. Okay, yeah, he was, he yeah, was yeah, swearing yeah. by that thing. Yeah, they have those, and they sound great. Yeah, they sound super good, man. Yeah, they're great for like any kind of like from clean to like clean to like super heavy, you know. Yeah. You can kind of get. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. out of them. The eighty fours do kind of a different thing than yeah. six L sixes. I think a lot of us are so used to hearing the. 800 right, or right. amps built on that circuit, you know, that it is a nice change of pace. Yeah. Know, it's something yeah. different. So I guess you're getting a pretty round, filled out yeah, sound just, with all this. Just kind of throw them all together in the pot and there. All right, so, you know, obviously you're a Les Paul guy, but you and your studio have a, I, I've looked over your studio list, you got a hell of guitars. What is it about a Les Paul that you love live? Is that just because you're so comfortable with it? Or? It's just like, you know, like the same thing like a one guitar band, you know, like you need to be full of space, you know. Brian, he plays a lot of things on bass that are almost like uh, guitar lines. So sometimes I got, I just got a just have a heavy, thick sound. You know? Right, right. You yeah. can't really. And it's kind of get, get heavier than that, you know. Les Paul through a Marshall through, a, you yeah. know, like that's just kind of that sound, man. It does that. To win. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of uh, uh, Brian, you think this guitar is beat up? You guys are gonna just fall over when you see this bass. We're really gonna get to that in a second. But I gotta thank you so much for yeah, your man. time. I really, really awesome appreciate it, dude. Dude, awesome. pleasure to meet you as well. I'm a big fan too. Shit. Oh, I'm glad you watched yeah. the show. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, heck yeah, dude. Next time you're in town, let's definitely yeah. grab a beer. Absolutely. Man. All right. Cool. cool. All right, now we're on the other side of the stage with Brian. Yeah. Brian is a guy I consider to kind of be responsible for like the modern punk bass tone. You guys have been doing oh, cool. this so long, man, and it, you always yeah. have the slinkiest standout bass tone. I, I, I love it, man. Thank you. And I guess that has to do with this thing. This thing. Look at this thing. All right, guys. This oh my. My God. one and only. And this is just from playing with picks? Yeah, I feel, I'm, I'm starting to feel pretty bad about it. Like, I, Dude, love, I love this thing. That's a quarter inch But I'm deep. hurting it, yeah. I mean, that's, Holy that's a half, yeah. that's a half good uh, half inch deep, I think. Oh yeah, definitely half right here. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, kind of like, you gotta get a close cool. up of that, yeah. What year is this? So this is 66 jazz. Oh, wow. um, I guess you, you just talked to Pete about his white guitar. Oh yeah. I bought this, we both bought them at the same time, at the same place. Did he tell you where? Because I don't remember the year. It was, I want to say Mike's Music in Cleveland. 
next door to a gig we were playing. There was like an old music store. It was awesome. It had like two floors. It was obviously pre pre internet, so you could still try to get a good deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you could yeah. get a good deal, like you know, because you were in Cleveland or wherever we were. I want to say Cleveland. Yeah. So Crazy. Yeah, that's the origin. I, I mean, that thing is pretty beat to hell. Have you had to do any maintenance or switch pickups or? Um, change pots or anything because it looks like I mean obviously this yeah thing is over over the years it has have, you know done things like all of those things actually um, I got some reliable guys that work on it um, now I just take it to Russo's since we're in the Jersey Shore right. area um, those are our guys uh, Asbury Park but um, yeah most importantly strike anywhere sticker got to represent yeah that's, that's been there all along um, <laughs> I had this was a actually this was a strike anywhere sticker too, and I think I put them both on when we were on tour together. <sighs> oh, dude, Pete's better about remembering these things, but fifteen years ago, probably, you know, whatever some Man, shit. They have the most fun live shows. Seeing you guys together yeah. was a blast. Oh. Yeah, they were. We toured as much as we could with them. Hot Water Music was another one that we just like tried to do as much as we could together. Huge fan, yeah, huge fan like, of Hot Water for sure. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at this second because you have a backup, obviously. Right. Just in case. Are you on that most of the night? This is it every night. It. Okay. This is like, Unless it, something it, goes horribly it, wrong. It never has. It's, it's never let me down. I mean, like, fender bases are bulletproof. It's you like know, an like. Old it's truck. Just, yeah. It's, it's just, just like, yeah. Ever. It's better than an old truck because I've had them too. <laughs> and they've let me down, but this, never. That is so um, cool. Also got to give Kyle Rogendorf a shout out. He's the guy that kept this thing alive too for at least a decade before I started going to Russo's. Um, my backup, just in case something ever happens, is uh, also a 1966 Jazz. It's gorgeous. Which I picked up around the same time. And also, you, it's starting to get a little weird. Like yeah, a, like a, it, was, it was starting. And then I, I only played this for a couple of years actually. I, I guess I did my usual kind of damage, and I'm like, well, if I put stickers here, but Slow it's just, it down it, from, yeah, yeah. Like, this is probably like a punk belt, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. That's what happened to both of the backs of these, you know, like studded belts, but. Um, See, something in me has to believe that if you're literally plain enough to where you're getting rid of any kind of finish, like obviously this is nitrocellulose, but like, especially on newer guitars that are yeah. such a thick lacquer, like, I think what makes a, guitar and a bass sound incredible is like the resonance of the wood yeah so, i mean these have got to be more resonant than getting yeah. like a brand new one you know they, I, mean? I, th I think so it's just like the, sh the wood is so dry and old and yeah, um love that and in both of the cases it's like you can pick up a thousand different fender bases and they're all going to sound different at least in my experience and like this one just sounded great right off the bat like and the sound i get is basically from digging in and fucking playing yeah. it like well, you play hard as shit. Yeah, yeah so that's the tone <laughs> the tone is like ape man and that's obviously like what strings are you running um 105s ernie balls cool people they just fucking they've been hooking us up for years and so yeah cool company for sure man cool company and then i totally assumed you were gonna have some ampegs whoa whoa that happens <laughs> they, they fall it's fall. okay <laughs> obviously um, nothing Bad is gonna happen. No, they're bulletproof, man. <laughs> yeah. Bulletproof. Um, this looks like a newer classic. This is a newer classic. This is I don't know how old this one is. Is um, I, I've had a f you know few along the way, so I think this is probably twenty years old at least or wow. something. Um, it's my favorite sounding bass cab, but man, they suck to move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're so they, huge. You know, and if enough put enough miles on them, eventually something breaks, like the the cabinet itself or the casters or the wood. That little angle piece where the casters are bolted to that, that always I have comes. one at home yeah. that's just like that I had done like a decade of touring on and just wore it through. Um, I've, I've, I've gone through, I mean that's all I play is Ampeg amps, like that's it and whatever. I've gone through like the classic head and the, the SVT3, yeah. the SVT4. I, for a while there was this guy Steve Dockraden and he was like the artist rep there and I'd just be like and all I, we did was tour, like, all year round, you know? Yeah, so I would like, I was going through heads like every few years and I was like, let me try the four and let me try the whatever. I th yeah, and so. What'd you land on? What are you, what are you running now? My, my go-to for live is the SVT4. No, wait a minute, the two. It's like a rack, it's, back, it's around the corner because the stage isn't big enough for everything. Oh, I'll show you guys a line. picture so you can see the settings yeah. and stuff. But the SVT3, for some reason, seems to be like my magic for recording like there's something about Weird. it it's like it it I, I don't know like i'm not good 
with tech talk, but like there's just something, I just go on sound and there's something about the three, um, cause I'm not really digging in and beating it up as hard. I, I can get, a, I can control like the volume and tone and everything and everything comes through, everything I do. Yeah, stuff, yeah, all the dynamics come through on the three in the studio. But the four is just like every fucking, the full frequency, just where you need it. And it's just dependable and loud and good. Yeah, those things are pretty dependable. Man. Yeah, I've dropped one down a set of stairs before, and it still worked. Great. I think that's dependability. That must be my thing. I don't know. Yeah, and then the clearly tone, that's the tone, it's a, yeah. That's your motto here, and I'm not seeing a ton of pedals. You got a tuner. I have a tuner. That's you sound it. Pretty good. Yeah, like in the studio, I fucked with Sans amps. You know, like they're just they're fun to play with a little bit, but for a little game. Yeah. Are you getting all of your, like? If you're just running an amp and no pedals, is it pretty much a consistent tone? Like a yeah. little bit of a growl? Yeah, a little bit of teeth and then the, and the bottom. You got everything you need, you know. And are you dialing, Are you playing with the volume at all to try to like have more dynamics for softer parts or anything or no? That's just like how I play. Balls harder or so, it's softer and harder, you know? Like yeah. it's all like, it's just the instrument, you know, and, that, and an amplifier. Like everything else is the human, you know? The yeah. human is the thing for me. So obviously you're a J bass dude, why? A J bass and not a P bass. Actually, I love the P bass too. That was my first Fender. It was a P bass. I still have it. It's a 77 P. It's at Damn. home. Um, I like the sound of that too. I just like the feel of the jazz. It's just like the neck is nice. It's the and, neck, yeah, it's yeah. The neck, yeah. And there's a little bit of a round honk to it's it that. Uh, it does it's, have it's, a really I cool slinky. I can only do things like yeah. this to describe the sound. It's, it's round and Oddly, has a nice honk. I know honk. exactly what you're talking when about. When you hit it just right, you get a nice yeah. round honk too. And they I punch. like so, yeah. They cut through a mix hard. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, that's a big thing with you guys. I mean, he's kind yeah. of running a wall of sound, three amps over there, so you kind of yeah. have to have that. Dynamic. I even like, yeah, early on, I was like, I, the Rickenbacker was so cool looking to me, and I bought a white Rickenbacker, and I'm like, this thing's awesome. And it just didn't work at all with Pete's guitars. Like oh, it didn't cut through. Different and frequency. Totally just, just different, just different. I don't know. These things are a perfect pairing, I guess, at least for us. It's just classic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the sound. That's yeah, that's it. Kind of, it does that thing for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, dang, dude, I got to thank you so much yeah. for hanging out with us and yeah. talking to us today and running us through this stuff. You bet. And congrats on 30 years. New yeah. EP is great. Thank you. All, I I'm love, glad I, you like it. Yeah, 1989. It's thrashy. That's yeah, I love we're going to play that it tonight. Is. That's a fun oh, live awesome. one. Awesome. All yeah. right. I'm excited for that. Anyway, thanks guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for other rig rundowns, riff rundowns, lessons, all that fun stuff. See you next time.